For instance, our figures show that when a customer spends a dollar on his automobile, 90 cents of it goes for the things that our dealers do not normally supply or make a point of supplying as conveniently as do others. By this I mean washing cars, greasing cars, adjusting brakes, flushing radiators, repairing headlamps, bumping out fenders, and general body work. If more of our dealers would set themselves up to make it attractive for their customers to come to their service stations for everything and put a price on these items that would be in line with competition, I do not think the average Chevrolet service station could take care of all of the customers who would come in. Some dealers have said to me, why is it that I am only getting between 20 and 30 percent of my owners? While I'm not sure that I know the answer, I'm very suspicious that the reason they don't come back is that either the Chevrolet dealer charges more than service competitors in that community charge for the same class of work, or they are not treated as courteously, or they feel the work is not done promptly, or that the work is not done satisfactorily. We created the Chevrolet service business by selling the automobile in the first place, and it's ours by right, but we have the right to claim it only when we offer general service at least equal to, or better than, that of others doing the same class of work. It seems to be the height of folly to attempt to fill our service stations with work unless we meet these issues. And in too many of our service stations today, these issues are not met. So we say to those dealers who want to make more money out of this business, and especially from the service end of it, look to your service. Find out whether you would come in willingly yourself if you were a Chevrolet owner instead of a Chevrolet dealer. And when you can answer these questions in your favor, you will prosper and profit in your service department. The next most important subject is, how will we come out on the used car situation during the coming year? This subject increases in importance when you consider the fact that for the first time in Chevrolet history, we will have two lines of sixes to sell. The question has already been asked, will there be two different used car appraisal prices on the standard and the master lines of Chevrolet sixes? And while we cannot answer that question now as accurately as we shall be able to after we have had a little more experience, I should like to give you this thought for what it is worth. Any used car that you take in, whether on the standard or the master, is worth only so much in a used car market when you sell it. The buyer of a used car is not interested in what kind of a car you took it in on. He will only pay so much for it when it is his turn to buy it from you rather than to sell it to you. It seems we should have enough courage and enough managing ability in all of our places of business to know what a used car is worth and pay that figure no more, no less. On no other basis can we continue to be good businessmen and keep the proper control of our used car situation. Each year we have stood before our dealers and encouraged them not to be reckless in bidding on used cars, and not to be led astray by what this dealer is reported to have said or to have bid as against some other dealer. A Chevrolet dealer who knows what used cars are worth and trains his organization to pay what they are worth will be a much better Chevrolet dealer at the end of the year, both for himself and the company. The Chevrolet Motor Company believes that Chevrolet dealers can improve themselves financially in 1933. But to accomplish this, a certain few definite things need to be done by every dealer to get a better profit out of his business. First, do not permit your expenses to increase. In some instances, 
they should be further decreased. Second, see to it that you add to your gross or overall income by bringing in more profit through your service department. Next, do not be led into a bad used car situation, either by overbidding or permitting your stocks to accumulate. And last, have an aggressive selling organization. While the product that we have appeals to the public, and perhaps it will be easier to sell than heretofore, nevertheless a good product requires aggressive selling. If you are to get from your territory all of the business as well as all of the profit that is there for an aggressive dealer. We want you to get all of the business you can and we want you to protect the Chevrolet Motor Company in turn by giving us the business to which we are entitled from your community. We confidently expect an increase in volume over 1932. We believe this is a reasonable goal because our market has been broadened. The public recognizes the greater values and advanced features offered by Chevrolet. We started 1933 with the largest bank of unfilled orders we have had in several years. All of these factors are in our favor and we already have a flying start toward our objectives. I want to thank you for coming here and bringing your department heads with you. I feel sure that the program we have arranged will be interesting and profitable. In conclusion, we pledge to you our continued cooperation and support and wish for you a successful year in 1933.